So we are reconciling. And the only thing I believe we have different, and I there is so little I didn't even bring it with me because I can memorize it, is public works. Yep. Two items. Yep. Yeah. Because that's just a the, the library's name talking about revenue. Right. Yeah. And then you will hand it. Well, that's something you talk about. You want to talk. We'll talk about it tonight, though. Not that we have a difference. We don't have, but we should. We can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So there's two differences and one non difference that we all have to make a decision. Okay. No. So we are um, DPW. And we were a difference on the part time line and salt. The board of select, the select board said to go with last year's numbers on both of those. And the finance committee said to go with the department heads request. Accurate? Salt. And yeah. Part time and salt, just yes. that. Yep. Yeah. Um, we had a, you know, and everyone can chime in. I'll, I'll just start with where, where the, what are the ones different, right? So I'll give you what I think our thoughts, our thought were, and if I'm different, everyone else can speak up and tell you. Um, we went with the, we'll start with the part-time payroll number. We went with the, the 13730 based on past use. If you look at 2020, 2021, as well as 1920, they haven't used, um, the best they did was probably 30% of that number. And we've, in this year also, the under understanding it was still only February 1st and we're at March 16th. There was only 1150 being used. So we felt there was enough room, enough adequate room to fund even further requests Utilizing last year's number. Is that accurate? Board? Yeah. Okay. So that's our take. Well, our take was that given the fact that they were looking to increase the hourly rate for the um, commercial drivers and not being real comfortable with the climate change and how much that affects the snows, the plowings, the salt, and all of that fun stuff. We're more comfortable going with the higher rate to give Dennis the ability to hire the people he needed at a competitive rate and to cover whatever may come up. I will say, and this is where our difference is. I believe there's room to do that with this 13 7 based on what we've used historically. The last two years combined, we're only talking $3,400 of use. Out of a budget that you know, thirteen seven thirty this year, and I don't, I don't know what the year before was. Probably somewhere in revenue twelve thousand, probably something like that. So, out of a total of probably somewhere around twenty two, twenty four thousand dollars, they used three thousand dollars in the last two years. We're also, and I, and I'll say this is my opinion. Multiple departments have said they have plans on what they want to do and want to hire. We know we're not finding people to hire. I haven't seen any, any evidence that those plans can come to fruition under the world. And this is just my opinion. This isn't everyone else's. I haven't seen any plans, and this is throughout the town. It's not just here, that there are people to bring in and people to hire. And police, public works, it's, it's all the same. It was, Lack of people. So, and I and I always say this at reconciliation. I have no qualms. Qualms. The two groups going in with different numbers. Some people do. I believe it represents to the people that we looked at it, we talked about it. There's different opinions. There's different thoughts. There's different beliefs. So if we don't agree, it doesn't bother me. I don't, 
doesn't matter who's wrong or right. Some the people will vote. People mm -hmm. will tell us. Mm -hmm. We'll go with that. So if if we don't reconcile, it doesn't break my heart. Are you willing to split the difference? If you don't mind, Dennis is here tonight. Ask him if he has any questions or like further explanation. Go for it, Dennis. No, I, I support your. your I just share with you that the, the increase in the salt count isn't an increased volume of salt. It's We're only on. Yeah, we'll get to salt. Okay. Right. We're only really part time. Let's solve one problem at a time. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> part, part time is is because we haven't had anybody on during the summer months in the last few years. I'd like to get somebody on in the summer months, and our winter drivers that we use are being paid fifteen dollars an hour, and that's what it's been for probably the last 15, 18 years. Fellows that are working at that position full time with benefits are making closer to twenty dollars, twenty twenty four dollars, twenty five dollars an hour. So if you try to bring somebody in without benefits, we should be closer to twenty five dollars an hour for, for a call driver like that to try to attract somebody. And and Chairman Douglas, I hear you loud and clear. You know, we both know we've been trying to fill positions at Public Works for a year and a half before we finally got one. You know, so I, I get it. I get it. I'm just, we were fortunate with COVID. Um, when we were down a driver or two, we worked around that. Um, I spent the winter in a plow truck. No, in, in big picture, we've been overtaxing people in this community. <clears throat> You look at what our fund balance is at the end of every year, and it is a significant amount. And if we don't find, and that's just taking a loan from the people for free. Yeah. And that's that's what this has been. It's what we've done in many departments. And I'm me personally, I'm done with it, over it. I lose a lot of the battles, but so Dennis, are you saying that given the current situation? Are you having a hard time finding buyers, uh, drivers at $15 an hour? No, I'm saying I'm having a hard time finding drivers, period. Period. And the ones I have are reluctant. I'm beating on the door pretty heavy to get them to come in and drive for us. Right now. And, and because of that, you're driving right. on the weekends. Um, well, then driving 24 7. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the reason for the request for the summer personnel is because that's the only time the drivers are allowed to take time off take take time off and we get into our larger projects and so we need we need to focus yeah. to, you know if we, without the labor <clears throat> point too much but when you get into doing a road project you end up putting a couple of fellows out flagging you put a guy in a the truck there's three people right there and we've got an operator, a couple of fellows laying pipes. We're up to six, six, seven fellows on a job site. And in the summer months, we usually have four or five of us around, four or five gentlemen there. Yeah. And you think 25 an hour for a non benefit position will do it? You think we can get people to work? I, I, it'll, it'll be more attractive than it is right now. Yes, I think it could help. I think it, it could help. But I don't think the arguments that were against either one of those things, right. we believe the pile of money is there today. To do those things. So what you're saying is that you don't have to increase the budget because the extra money's there to cover his expenses. For the last two years, we've spent a total of thirty-four hundred dollars to date, and I don't know where he is after February one. I don't. Let's just say did the same as last year. <clears throat> That's forty-six hundred dollars. It was just double last year, and there was a budget of thirteen seven thirty. And then, so that's twenty five thousand dollars over two years, and we spent four thousand dollars. I believe there's room to. That's my take. I believe there's room to give that money and higher. It's my. I agree with, and I've been an advocate for the last since I've been on the board. I do not think that we should have a surplus at the end of every year of five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars of the people's money that we roll over. I just don't believe in that. And it is, if you go and get a loan, there's interest on that. If we charge taxes and you don't pay on time, there's interest on that. Just because it's us, people out there are working and paying these bills. And I feel very strong about that. So 
I think as far as Janice, I think he's great. And I, I do trust his judgment, but when the money hasn't been used consistently for two years, I think we're fine this year. Look at it again next time. So I think the one bit for me here is um, the raise he's proposed makes sense to me. And it's the most tangible part about that line item. Um, because again, there's a lot of uncertainty around uh, whether or not we can even bring someone in right now, right? So, I mean, if we were to give folks raises, which I mean, if they're making fifteen dollars an hour, that's <coughs> well, uh, I mean, it seems like we might be able to come up with a number, uh, maybe not including, or I guess maybe a little bit higher than thirteen, but I, I still think it's going to be less than that twenty. They say that makes sense. I guess I'm looking at the what's tangible right now. What's the what we can actually grab onto. So that makes sense. So Dennis, can you? I guess so. Why in the past, if we've had a surplus, did you not feel comfortable to raise the salary for part time, given the fact that there were some extra funds there? Is that? I mean, I don't understand logistically how. It, it, it's just a matter of trying to figure out the hours, <laughs> the dollars per hour rate, for the number of hours that we use part time. Yeah. I, I don't know in a given winter how many hours I'm going to have for the winter months. Right. So historically, what I've tried to do when I did have summer help is I waited until after the winter, see where my part-time count was, to know what I could schedule somebody. For first, whether I would try to get somebody to come on board for the summer months, and then what I had left for funding to fund that position. Mm -hmm. so it's been a, a high school age, somebody kind right. of local like that. Right. Yeah. It's it's. It's a crystal ball and loose is clear. Yeah. You know, and, and I, 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 I'll try to, you know, it's the best I can describe it and try to explain my, my you know, defensiveness to the, to the proposal. You know, you know. If you had the same amount in there, this year's budget, this current budget, would that enable you to raise somebody? A one, one driver or one cop that you call in? With that money that's in there, that 40, 30, or 40 percent that's left over each year? Yes. The, the, yeah, the, the, the winter, what you see right now is what's being used during the winter only. Because I have not had anybody on during the summer months. If I could get somebody on for the summer, 40 hours a week for three months, it would be what, 12 weeks, 12, 14 weeks? You know, so we could. Uh, so yes, the answer to your question is it would it would increase the pay for the winter help, yes, for winter part-time drivers. You're going from 25 from 15 to 25. That's a two-thirds and 66% increase, which is I think pretty substantial. And I'm not sure that cutting it back to the 13 plus the summertime person would cover all of that. So we you must, take seven thirteen seven thirty divided by fifteen. That's nine hundred hours. That's what you get. You bump. You take that nine hundred hours. It's going to fully utilize that twenty five dollars an hour. Is twenty three thousand. So the twenty is sort of in the middle, basically. The way I look at it, so you're probably not going to get the full nine hundred hours, but you could afford to hire somebody for seven hundred. Yeah. But you're not. He's not looking to pay twenty five for summer help. No. Yeah, I think that's. I think it's strictly <laughs> wind driver 25. Oh, right. I'm sorry. And then okay. the, the summer sorry. person would be in a different. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. A different skill set. Yeah. Okay. But still, I mean, something like there's got to be, there's got to be a, and I know it's different every single year, but if there's over an eight year run, you got to have that. So, I don't know. Right. I mean, I understand the concern about overtaxing <clears throat> people, but I always tend to be on the conservative side. I'd rather have more and not have to worry so much about, God, where am I going to, what bucket am I going to take it out of to cover whatever line item is short because we estimated wrong. But we haven't had to do that for a long time. Are you yeah. sure? I'm sure. Ever. We haven't done that. Well, you know, it, it, I've said this before, the last two years have been <coughs> unprecedented in um, utilizing labor and being able to do work and being able to do the work. Um, I 
Dennis's point is, is just to summarize it the way I look at it is summer help. If we haven't had um, majority of our people do take vacation in the summer because they can't during winter because it's so long and getting a call. Um, and that coupled with the additional work that the seed that the plowing needs it in the winter. Based on numbers, if you were to continue uh, and just hire $15 an hour for a summer for 12 weeks, that's about 7500 7, ish That doesn't count benefits, though, does it? No, this would just be part-time work. Part -time. Mike is not included, but we'd have to add that. <coughs> but you'd still Mike. have your payroll tax. You might be a med C, Social yeah, Security, typical payroll. unemployment compensation, the whole nine times. Which, right. That coupled with the winter driving, which Dennis is alluding mm -hmm. to, at $25 an hour or that range. Yeah. I mean, yeah, everybody's got a point here. Um, and we're right. But when, <laughs> it comes, when it comes to security, I just, I just caution you know, to be careful. We underutilize department budget because we didn't have a choice. We're coming out of COVID. Um, I, I really think what we're presenting is what we need. Um, in some areas, of, uh, obviously, we, there's unknowns. Storms are unknown. Uh, public safety sometimes is unknown. Uh, and so, you know, turnover, there's so many different variables in that. But there's, um, yeah. it's, it's a decision that, that we're going to have to make. It's, it's, it's $6,300 plus quite right there right now. So, if, if if it's down to what we used last year, that's fine. But you have to understand, you know, what, what Dennis has pointed out as well as all the other department is. Um, if it's less than that, we'll make do. But but we don't plan just to throw money at the pot and tax the taxpayer either. Well, the only thing I have to say is again, I you convinced me a little that I think the people should have <clears throat> I think $15 an hour is pretty low. I absolutely agree with that. But I think for, I don't know, I could run it for the last four years. One year we had 900,000 left over. This year was different with COVID, we can't. But before one year it was 900,000, we gave 500 and some thousand back to the people in taxes, we added it to the budget. The next year it was five, six, 700,000 over. This last year it was, a thousands again, and I don't know what it will be this year. It's quite an amount. And uh, this year I understand COVID, but it's consistent. It's been consistent. That's what I have a problem with. But the question is, what are we not getting done in the summer that we could if we had this position staff? Well, fortunate for us last summer, we didn't get to our paving because Parker wasn't available. Because we to help. And that's across the board. So because you didn't have personal help, it really didn't affect you because you couldn't get to the I couldn't anyway. Right. Yeah. So we stayed at personal one time. So an example of the opportunity cost is, you know, additional road maintenance. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the value? Of that? Additional road maintenance. Yes. Maintenance. Yeah. 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 Can't say pay me because it's a different line. But just, just but you have to do prep work, work before work. Kruger yeah. can do the road. Right. So twenty five dollars an hour at thirty staff hours per week for a part time winter person over seventeen weeks. Because let's say winter goes seventeen weeks, you're talking like twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars. We know we're not using. 17 straight weeks in the winter of hell. Don't know what the number is. I mean, but we've experienced this. You know, I count all that's December through March, 17 weeks. Um, that's twelve thousand dollars at 30 hours a week. That is probably has some weeks he uses that, some weeks he doesn't. Um, it, it's a and that still comes in under that 13. I would think it's fair to say you don't use gosh, I would push towards 50 percent of that amount. If you're looking at 30 hours, staff hours a week for part-timers in the winter, 17 weeks, I, I still think there's probably there to get summertime and 
a healthy benefit and healthy rates. And seven hundred fifty dollars a week for thirty hours a week at twenty five bucks an hour. And there's no way we do seventeen straight weeks of having a part time having. But David, During the winter. So you're basically saying let Dennis do what he needs to do, but we can get it out of the surplus. We can get it out of his budget, out of the 13, 7, 30, the same number as last year. But doesn't that also say that Dennis has been out there on the road during a lot of this and he can hire somebody to do that? Isn't that going to also bump up the part time numbers? Yeah. Because now you're paying an extra body, not somebody who's sitting there. I mean, not that you sit there, Dennis. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean it argues if he's if you've got the ability to haul somebody in at 25 bucks an hour, that gets Dennis off the road where he shouldn't be to begin with, which to me says that part-time line, why shouldn't he be? Why shouldn't he be? No, I mean well, you should be driving around figuring where the hot spots are directing people as opposed to doing right. it for themselves. The plows right. and stuff. That's yeah, what I'm I saying. Agree. You shouldn't yeah. I mean that's I thought the money's been there. We haven't used it. Fact still remains. Doesn't matter yeah. if Dennis wants to come out of the truck. We don't use it. Do we have an updated figure for that as of now on that line? With 1,150, would you? We got about a month to use. What's the difference? As of, five, six more weeks. As of March 9th, if, if the reports that we can run as department heads, we're at like 11, $11,500 left in the line. Yes. So you've used 2,200 bucks. Right. We we haven't we haven't used a lot of it. No, I understand that. But you couldn't get anybody in the truck. We can't get any next year. But if you have eleven thousand five hundred, that's going to get you pretty close to right. Five hundred over the last three years. Come on, yeah. Just saying. Not I understand times. everybody's input. I really do. So I'll you know, I have to put together a budget with what I hope right. for yeah. theoretically. And, how it looks on paper with a part time person figure it out and add it up, and that's why I came. To it. Don't fund money for if, or, if in a regular winter or a more normal winter, I used up more part time funding in the, in the winter. I wouldn't even think about something else. Last couple of years, we haven't used it, so I'd like to get back getting somebody on in the summer to help with our projects and covering vacations and that type of work. That's the last three years. Three, yeah. Well, three and two and three quarters, right? Because we haven't finished this. Summer. And I don't know what was in that line 2019-20. And you know, because it doesn't show in our, our budget. But. So what do you feel about splitting the difference again? Well, so you're talking go to 17 or something? Yeah, 17. 17 mm -hmm. Anyone feedback? I'm fine with that. If just let's have a plan to use it, basically. Yeah. Like, you know, staffing or something out and say, when do we start recruiting in the summer and all that? Just get an update in terms of, like, is, is this salary strategy working relative to acquisition of new employees? I mean, part of that could be part of this year's budget numbers if we're talking about picking somebody up in May, right? Which would up his part time numbers come the end of the year. I think that's his hope. See where he is at the end of the winter. Seventeen, everybody. Seventeen. Where's our arbitrary? Doesn't it? Well, then twenty's arbitrary. There's no real data behind any of that. It's just like right. that's no saying that exactly. okay, we're going to split it. Um, if we get the help, if we get you know, yeah. But if you don't have it there, you can't go looking for the help either. Want to encourage the help? If we're yeah. doing so. I mean, it's been is, there. I, I just it's been there. hopefully, you know, it's obviously it's a uh, unknown, but it'd be great to sort of start catching up on some of this data. Mm -hmm. Another maintenance project. Yeah. 
Don't move by four. <laughs> I am extremely confident that two seven thirty does the job. So you're not willing to compromise, is what you're saying. He's not the damn board yet. But it, the, I'm one. Uh, so basically, Roland and I cancel each other out. <laughs> it's a hard one. It really is. It's a hard, but I I have to stick with. If it hasn't been used and it's been left over year after year, that's part of the problem at the end of each cycle. So, it, and that adds to it. So this year, I hope it all can be used. I just want you to hamstring Dennis if you don't give him the funds to be able to go out and actually recruit and not just do with. And that's to me what it's sounding like. Okay, this is all you're going to get. Do what you can. If you could have done more by having a little more money in the budget, too bad. Well, what happens if Dennis hires somebody and you know, what he needs, he actually gets somebody on and he goes over budget? And find someone in his department. Yeah. Water to do water on. So he's got, to, he's got to shift things around. Yeah. yeah. Put the 17 drum over time in 2000. Mm -hmm. Dennis, hmm. that must, um, <laughs> Roland yeah. just threw out do the 17, but drop overtime 3,000. Does that help you in any way with overtime? Does that help me with overtime? <laughs> having <laughs> having drivers, yeah. having Having additional drivers yeah. on the road in the winter, do you see that get your crews off the roads quicker during storms because you have more on at one time? I, I, and I, and I, I know it's a guess. I, it's a guess, and I would have to say no because I don't have additional plow trucks to put those other people in. I'm putting them in trucks that my full time staff isn't in. So if I get any, <clears> if I have a gentleman out, that's what they're driving, it's the truck with the. So we're only we're we're using we cars if we're out of out of people are out for whatever reason. That's when we use part time. Well, we have one one part time comes in every single storm. Okay. If I use additional part time, it depends on the size of the storm, the size of the storm, and the significance of it. Do I put two pickups out? Do I put two <coughs> pickups in a one ton out plus our seven plow trucks? Do I pull somebody in and put the grader out with them? Because it's a it's an icy storm and I've got to scrape roads and, and tear up the ice. Is it after a storm that was tremendous? Like we, we haven't seen them in a while, I get it, where we saw it at almost 30 inches, and we're out with my full-time guys hauling snow and nobody's setting banks, nobody's clearing walks. So I've got two sidewalk machines to stack and put into it. And I and I agree, I haven't used it for a few years. I understand that 100 percent I also understand that 13,000 will do it with what's been going on for a few years. I just, I have to work through the numbers logistically, trying to figure my summer help, my part-time help in the winter and, and come up with a budget figure. That's why I came up with that figure this year. I just, just want to reiterate where that number came from for Dennis. It's not that I'm trying to um, build a bigger department and have a commonwealth down there. Folks, it's just trying to cut the grass and plow the snow and pay the streets. That's, that's all we're trying to do with, with my crystal ball. But again, it, no, I haven't used it. If I if I start out July 1 with somebody mowing lawns and we're doing great guns and then I get hit with a good size winter, I'm in the red and I've got no way to tend that back. If I've had a hard winter, now I'm coming into spring and early summer then I don't hire somebody part time in the summer months. Until July 1. And you've already mentioned, well, how does Dennis balance his budget? He has to cut someplace else. This is one of those areas that I've kind of reeled in sometimes to try to keep my bottom line from going over. Isn't I can control this. I can't control the amount of salt I've got to put down, how much fuel use I have, and the cost per gallon or things like that. You know, I can stop hiring the part time and we'll go without that area of help. I thought highway was the one that could go over budget with the state. It, it, wasn't there something there that you could without? Ruth, I think I think you're on to something there. Yeah. But I've never worked for anybody that's told me, never mind your bottom line. 
Well, in my career, in my career, my bottom line has always been in the black. I'm not saying that, but if it's an exceptional winter, I think there's something that the highway department is the only department that's allowed to go over their budget according to the state. Perspective. I think it is correct. But at the same time, yeah, you know, people can only work so many hours a week too. Public safety is an area that could get could get over on this but the right. public safety is the reason to... why yeah. you do that. <clears throat> but that doesn't change the fact that you've still got to rob Peter to pay Paul to get it done. Right? If you have to, yeah. That's what you have to do. But what well, Lauren said, it's it's unpredictable. Um, right. As we know, we're budgeting, you know, sometimes 18 months out in inflation is a factor. Storms are a factor. Yep. Was right. this considered a hard winter balance? Probably for you folks, no, but for our public works department, it was. Weekends and evenings. In 14, in 14 days, you know, we do our month of our weekly reports every two weeks. In 14 days, we were in nine times, other than seven to three thirty. Just I'm not crying, I'm just stating the fact. Okay, that's all I'm saying to you. Yeah, we were in nine times in additional to our regular 14, our regular 10 day work period. And it showed you on the staff that sidewalks only done for two days because mm -hmm. you didn't have manpower there all they done diagram. And, and, and it was when the storm fell out. You know, storm came in Thursday night, all day Friday. We got done up like <clears throat> early Saturday morning, sent the boys home, and then instead of coming in Sunday morning, they came in early Monday morning to get started on for school. It's that's it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a mix. You say like a sleet storm is a lot worse than a snowstorm? Oh, absolutely. We're still running the same lane miles with our trucks and the same time behind the wheel, but we're using so much more product. So I'd rather plow, plow all the time and have to put down salt in that because we take so much more salt to try to try to beat it up, get the ice off the road. Snow plows, we can plow 12 inches off and it's gone and it's bare road, we're golden. When it's three inches of, of snow and then it's sleet and freezing rain and it's cold ground, we're, we're plowing with one inch on the ground to try to keep it bare so it doesn't adhere to that pavement to freeze on and turn to ice. And we're treating it every time, not just at the end of the storm, we're treating it every pass through. I, I, I'd rather have a vacancy check in a couple other departments to deal with worrying about 3,000 bucks here because. I'd love to have vacancy factors in every single one of them. I know. <laughs> just have a minute. Um, I mean, this is, you know, obviously it has been evident this year, and we still have $10,000 thereabouts in this account. So why didn't we make any effort this winter to alleviate some of those problems? Does that sum up? Yeah. Yeah. Alleviate what problem? Well, in terms of uh, you know getting another driver, um, trying to alleviate some of those issues with staff or personnel, as you think. Like you have ten thousand dollars in your account right now, right? And this ends June thirty. Yeah. So how come? And you've had this since July one of last year. Why haven't you brought another staff member on in that time, using that ten thousand dollars you have right now? Matt, I just, I just tried to explain. I, I didn't have anybody during the summer months. Mm -hmm. I didn't put anybody on during the summer months because I've got to wait to see what I use up in the winter months. And I didn't have anybody to draw to for the winter months except the gentleman I've used for about the last 12 years. It's in his mid to late 70s now. Is it junior? When I pick up the phone and call somebody, yes, it is. When I pick up the phone and call somebody and say, well, yeah, okay, I'll get out of bed, but how much are you paying? No, I'm not getting out of bed for 15 bucks an hour and driving in a snowstorm. In 1999, 2000 plus, <clears throat> I'm just not going to do that. I don't know if that answers your question. But that's why I haven't spent the money this year. I've got nobody to draw. My mechanic's out in the storm. We got a breakdown. He's in. He, he's in the garage working. That follow says we can. You know, it's up. It's up to you folks how you want to find it. You know, it's entirely up to you. 
we're doing all we can do to keep up to it right now. And I'm just sharing this ideally that this is what I'd like to have for funding to, to make keep happening and keep up to the current standards of what we're plowing through and treating roads to. So rolling the overtime thing, you're good with that theory. Yeah, I mean, so Matt, you're the last one that I split like the difference. Rolling's overtime. Um, but you want to go that way after here? Well, let's, let me back up. <laughs> what's, what's the difference when you, you just, you're rather one from the other. Yeah, but if you look at, again, precedent from 2019 and 2020, we spent 29,000 on overtime in 2019, 24,000 in 2020, and we're asking for 40,000 this year. Granted, we spent 44,000 last year, but that's because we don't have anybody to do the work. No, it's a request. A request. 40, 40, request. Yeah. But if their base goes off in the overtime, they're going to send it to the judge. It's still not, do you think it's going to be? I, I don't know. I just want to know how much the much way back the road is. I think I think Dennis is explaining why he's in. I would be just an arbitrary number up there. Um, I need to stick with what we did last year, or in case it's one. If you give us what we had last year, Dennis, of course, is, is going to work with it. But um, because things are unpredictable in the department, especially, uh, he's going to have to drop from somewhere else. And we've been pretty lean. At least what we're budgeting, the numbers that we have, whether or not we overspend or underspend, we're always going to underspend. We're never going to overspend. Um, it's a choice I think we have to make. Well, I think the other thing you ought to keep in, to me, what I think about is six thousand dollars is a point six cents difference on the mill rate. I mean, sorry, I think that's. People couldn't afford that. Granted, the budget is what the budget needs to be to run the town. But I think in the big picture, I, I understand 0.6 here, penny there, it all adds up. But at this point in time, I think that's a pretty minor concession to make and to help Dennis run his department and get what he needs. This entire $11 million budget is built on 0.6. Oh, I know. That's dollars. what I just said. Right. Yeah. The whole thing to get where we are today is built on items just like that. But we're talking just two items between the two committees that we have a difference of opinion on, which will make Strong. a difference. Strong. <laughs> well, I'm just saying the, the rest of the budget we're all agreed on. And granted, it's 11 million, but this is again, between those two budget items, that's 1.6 cents difference on the mill rate, which in my opinion, Dennis is worth it. So Matt, they threw out. Dennis. Oh, I'm going to move the question. Yeah, sorry. You're the but last one. They threw out the 17,000. Split the difference. I need something from you. I'm okay with 17. So now we're 2-2. Two, two. It defeats. Doesn't the town manager get to tie break? He gets nothing. He's <laughs> <laughs> not like the vice president. Yeah, I got it down to two lines. Birdie's not online or anything, is she? No. This is why we have five select people. Uh -huh. So it stays at 13, 7, 30. 30, 20,000 go two different numbers. Go with the 20. Go with the 24 hours? Yep. We'll stick with the 20. Find it out at the town meeting. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> wait for the next one. We vote is to get us. Right. Next one is salt. And before we even begin to discuss it, I just want to be clear. It's two different numbers here. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had gone sticking with the last year number versus the request. You guys went with the request. Derek just pulled up, and I wrote in that at, as of now. So take that two one number, and then I crossed it out. Now I think it said thirty three. 23, what was the number? The salt one? Yeah. Whatever it is. We've we now spent 74000 out of the 80000 So um, I'm not as inclined. I mean, that's pretty darn close. And knowing, close, yeah. knowing where things are going, I'm not as inclined to hold on to last year's number at this time. Personally. 
David, if I may, please, just, just to share with Don't you. Don't go lower than 74 if you could change my mind. Then. <laughs> I just want to share with you, because I know how it's going to look. The salt I have on order right now, because Portland has been out where we get it from, when it comes in, I'll probably be in the red. Okay. Yeah. I don't want people thinking that to make it look good, there's no more <laughs> snow coming. We're down to what is almost bare bones in our shed right now. We've got enough to feel kind of comfortable. Okay, don't get me wrong. But it's one of these deals that it doesn't spoil. So I try to keep some on hand. Portland, our, our depot where we buy our salt through, is presently empty. The boat came in last night. They're offloading today. Tomorrow or Friday, I should see a delivery. And it's probably going to be in the neighborhood of $6,500. $6,800, so it's probably going to go in the red, and I don't want people, that son of a gun did it just so he could prove his point. No, it's been ordered for about three weeks, some of it has. We'll so, have the most full salt shed in August of anyone around. No, it's not the case. <laughs> but I'm the so I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try to make it easy. I'm going to propose to go to the 90. Right. No problem. Uh, at least give an opinion. Um, well, I looked at all the bids for the last three years available on GP Todd's website. Um, 2019 it was 51.90 delivered, 51 picked up. 2020 it was 52.86 delivered, 52 picked up, and this year it was 58.73, 58 picked up, 58.73 delivered. So it's, we're looking at a six dollar increase over the last year. Um, if we're doing 6,800 for this period. So what is that, 115 uh, tons, Dennis? Is that, what is that metric? You said $6,800 total for uh, this next shipment, right? Approximately. Yeah. yeah. We're running about 30 tons, which is what you can put on the road at a time. So, I mean, it hasn't by been- gross vehicle, By the gross vehicle weight, we're, we're getting about 30 tons of time. I mean, it hasn't been increasing drastically over the last three years, and we've certainly had trucking issues over the last two years, to say the least. Um, inflation's been around as well. Um, I mean, I don't see the numbers proving out, and I mean, they don't go out to bid until April 30th for the next round, uh, from what GP Cog's saying. So we're not actually going to know what the cost of salt is until uh, May 20th or thereabouts. Um, Matt, does that factor in seven credit percent inflation since February, April is really, really inflation started kicking in. But we also have a special deal with GP card. This isn't like we're paying. Well, I understand, know, but but for no, retail no, year contract. So all I'm saying is the inflationary pressure since April, um, and of course, you know we're over right now anyways. Whether it's usage, volume, or just increased costs, mm -hmm. just like gas, we're not going to know. Until Contract from now. Well, we had six percent uh, inflation by what last October, I think already, right? But we were still three plus since April. Between April and when you say fall. Yeah. Dennis, would you say you're seeing more ice storms now than you used to requiring more salt? Mm -hmm. I can end all this. We're three to one. Okay. I just wanted Matt's opinion. I'm not budging. <laughs> okay. we're, we're good. Okay. We're, we're good. I just wanted to hear it, though. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. So those were our two disagreements down to one disagreement. Mm -hmm. We are now going to listen to the manager um, because there's an item that may have to go on the warrant in regards to our debt service. So he wants to bring us up to speed with something none of us have given a full opinion on. Uh, can that go up in any way somewhere? If you email me your PowerPoint, I can download it. Uh, the slides. He doesn't. It's, it's not. It's not really. So. Um, or you could bring. No, can you go to the presentation on, on public share? The one you set up for budget meetings. It's uh, budget. Okay. Yeah, one budget. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be the 
<laughs> also, in the uh, if you have your booklets, uh, it's in the memo. <laughs> okay, uh, when we initially did the presentation in February for both the board and the finance committee, we talked about where we are with our bonds. We found out uh, this, this past winter that two of our bonds are callable. This one never gets used, so all right. <laughs> <laughs> you sure it's the chair? So two of the bonds are callable, which means that we can pay them off, pay off a portion. Um, the bonds that are not callable are by agreement, we have to fill the terms so the investors can make money. So presented in this budget, the initial proposal was taking a look, just look at two particular bonds, one the BM. Y Mellon bond, which is basically the municipal complex and form savings bond, which um, has to do with the sidewalks and part of the complex. So highlighted in green on the slide presented in your booklets, um, we got fiscal year 23. All of that is budgeted. Also included in this budget um, is paying off all of Gorm savings bond. So fiscal year, fiscal year 24 and 25, in addition to everything highly in green, and fiscal year 26 for the DOY Mellon bond. That's included in the budget that you've been looking at since February. Um, during the presentation, um, I asked uh, both committees, I'm sorry, the committee and, and the select board, to consider paying off the complete DNY Mellon bond. Once we kind of figure out what our revenues would be, get a little bit better, you know, an idea uh, where you agree on the budget, where the county and the school may be coming in. Most importantly, though, what our state revenue sharing projection would be. Um, if we paid off what was proposed in the budget initially, our fund balance would be within the select board's policy of 16.78%. That's, that's my projection. Of course, we don't know what the school is going to be right now or if anything else changes. If I did the numbers today, if I tell you those, the state revenue projections came out yesterday and it's showing a $400,000 increase for the town, which is what we expect. However, there's a lot of caution out there because years ago, they didn't get what they projected, the towns didn't. With these numbers and where we're seeing the county come out, we have an idea of the school, although you know they're they're still deciding uh, in the state revenue projection, excise tax, our projection is, I think, as good as it's going to be. Um, I took a look at what if we pay off, in addition to what we have in the budget, fiscal year 25 at the end, why no fund. If we did. I'm projecting our fund balance should remain above 15% still. If we decided to pay off the complete Danwide Mellon bond and the Gorham Savings bond, our fund balance should be approximately 12 to 13%. I'm leaning high towards 13. Well, the school is more the select board would like to go, could be a little bit lower. But I don't see us going down to 12%. I would like uh, this group to consider what we should, how should we proceed forward. My recommendation is to pay off both bonds in total. By doing so, we'd save over $131,000 in interest over that period, fiscal year 26. And 
we'd also uh, have much more flexibility in next year's budget and beyond. If things get tight, or if, we, if the town selects to, you know, take on a particular project, whatever, it gives us that flexibility. Uh, after talking to our finance director and, and many people on the select board here and others, um, I, I think the comfort level is there. We've, uh, we've real no, no real need to be going around the fund balance, I think. Now, what is the fund balance? MMA uh, and GFOA, the uh, Government Finance Officers uh, Association, their, their recommendation is to stay at 16.7%. 16.7% is two months. Two months out of 12, that's 16.7%. To cover your operational expenses primarily. Um, what's the difference between 12% and 16.7%? Probably two weeks. I mentioned before when we did budget presentation, uh, given these times, uh, probably we into a recession, I would imagine. Uh, we've been very cautious in spending. Um, we've been very careful. Uh, we going into the next fiscal year, if we decide to pay this whole thing off and go down to this row, you know, we only spend when necessary. Um, and there's areas within the budget we don't have to do anything. Um, if things got tight within the first few months before we start collecting taxes in November. Um, so with all that being said, in our comfort level, I would recommend paying both funds off. But I just I wanted to bring this up for discussion uh, because our public hearing is on April 21st for the budget portion. And it's going to be included in the public hearing because one of the articles is debt service. If uh, whatever we decide, or, or you decide, if the town decides, um, we will notify uh, each of the bondholders uh, the day after town meeting to get that process started. There's time requirements before we start paying these off to, to get everything in line. Is there penalties when we need things to pay them? Yeah. No. That's when they become callable and you can't pay yeah. them. Yeah. That's what I thought. I mean, just so I just think that, like you said, if there was a deep recession and we had to wait, if things happened and we had to lay people off, we've only got a two month cushion there anyway. And if we take and we pay even all of it off, it just shortens it by two weeks. And we hope that doesn't happen, but. But it's just guidance. I think. It's just guidance. But the goal would be to bring it back up as soon as possible to stay within the select board policy. <clears throat> Finance committee is in favor of paying more. So we've had a workshop a couple months back, and the majority at the time was um, in favor with what <clears throat> came forward. So we need to talk a little bit. Um, I'm all in favor of paying them off. I, I don't cry. That's been my position since. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I want to hear what Roland said. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got nothing to say. I mean, everyone knows what I've got to say. I'm chips in. So I think we you know, said at our workshop, we wanted to wait and see what was going on. Right. right. First. So, I mean, Ruth and I just had budget county last week. Uh, it's probably actually going to be a decrease if they approve all their ARPA stuff from last year. Um, if not, I mean, max flat. So it's not like there's going to be an increase there. Our only variable, like Derek said, is the school budget right now, which could be big, it could be small. Who really knows? Um, it's unfortunate that we don't know that yet. It's very unfortunate. Um, and the fact <laughs> that revenue sharing is going up, which is fantastic as well. I'm totally fine with it. Would that have been announced too? I'm sorry, you said would the schools have been announced also yesterday, their share? Any, nothing? I, I haven't heard anything. I didn't know if you, anyone had seen anything. Otherwise, they're raising their share because see, they get, they were anticipating so much. If they increased yeah. that, was have they increased the schools also because their budget was. Sorry, Matt. No, I agree. 
I mean, isn't it this year? It's the year they're finally up to contributing the 55 percent that's been legislated for years and years and years. Yeah. Supposed to be. Yeah. Supposed to be. Where were they at? They weren't even in the 40, they were only mid 40s, right? Right. Was it really? Yeah, it's closer to 50%. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a close. Prior to that, yeah. 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 No. So I guess where I'm going with that is I'm fine with paying the full thing. Um, I mean, we have one variable left out there, with, and it's a big variable. Uh, right. But I don't think it's going to be as much of a roadblock um, given all the other dominoes that are falling in our, in our way. Well, if they give us figures, which we've asked for, it would help. Yeah, depending on what we saw at the MOE meeting, yeah. what our share is and where they potentially come at, we're going to be fine. Yeah. So, I mean, if they spend to the max, we're not going to like that so much because it'll be a tax hike. Uh, but we don't have debt. That we have to have next few years. And again, we get a little bit more flexible. That's going to, I might say, through job. It gives us flexibility of about $800,000 next year, all the two years. Just so you guys, Finance Committee, um, we went to that meeting last week. Have you guys got COVID? Did Derek COVID last week? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.